Hello and welcome to BCW19. The digital transformation of the commercial building is, as it turns out, as Frieda said at the beginning, for some people still a classic one. And uh, we want to make it a more modern one. And today we want to take you through a journey, or to two ones actually, the classic edition and the more modern one, to show you what these uh, intelligent kind of experiences could look like. So really, what does digitalization mean for commercial buildings? If we take one stakeholder of commercial buildings, you and me living in office spaces every day, as an example here, and assume that my friend Christian over here has an appointment with me at one of our Bosch facilities that he's never been before. So Christian, you have an appointment with me and you always know that I'm, you know, counting that you are on the point. What is that experience going to look like for you? My goodness, you? my goodness, I'm late. I've got 15 minutes to spare for my meeting with Andreas. Traffic has been horrible. Uh, you probably know Munich traffic. I'm at a Bosch campus in Munich, not been there very often. Time to find a parking lot. Which one should I choose? Um, oh, a service. They're all reserved. Come on. I need to drive around and find somewhere where I can park. Goodness. OK, let's go in. Um, of course. Well, you know, it's a different facility. My ba badge is not being recognized. So where's the registration? I need to go through visitor registration. 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes. And uh, hmm. fortunately, the guys at the reception had this nice paper map. So I need to get to building H. Um, where am I? Can somebody help me figure out how to get there? Is it left, right, left? Well, somewhere. Five minutes to spare. OK, elevators are easy. Elevators have numbers. They've got buttons. So I know number three. I can find number three. So where's section five, room 42? Uh, I don't know. Well, finally, I'm at my meeting. We have important business to discuss. I'm totally stressed out. I'm ready to fall asleep. And the air in here is just horrible. Andreas, this is a super stressful experience. There has to be a better way. If somehow the buildings we live and work in could support us in our business, we could achieve so much more. I almost forgot what we wanted to discuss about, actually. Yeah, so Christian, I really feel sorry for this experience, um, I must say. So um, the question, of course, would be then now, uh, what can we do to make this better? So now imagine that I am up to an appointment with my friend Christian, and of course, they have a more modern site. And uh, assume that we have the experience as follows. So I could actually arrange my parking slot right up front when I start my journey, but using some modern kind of mob mobile apps. And while arriving into the parking garage, I get actually guided into my space. And by the modern means of illumination displays, my spot will actually welcome me. And next, astonishingly, I don't actually even have to pass an access control point anymore because the building knows I arrived. I'm here. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm a valid registered Bosch citizen, and I'm allowed to be in that building. So the elevator has been called for me because of the integration of all of these calendar systems and the modern kind of office crafts that know, you know what kind of activities I'm up to. And it actually welcomes me with a very nice and friendly phrase, and it knows where I go to. Arriving at the right floor, of course, the elevator knew where I need to go. I get wayfinded. I get modern kind of display assistance by wearables or even by wall displays. And once in the meeting room, I now can control the level of comfort, air, temperature, lightning, and such. And so the question is, Christian, if we want to offer such kind of modern journeys from this stakeholder's point of view, what could we possibly offer? Could we compose those kind of services to become these intelligence ones for buildings? Well, Andreas, the technology you show, I think, is mostly available. 
But before we look at how we can tie things together, we need to understand who are we actually serving. And just now in our little journey, we put the occupants in focus. These are the people that live and work in buildings just like you and me. But as two more important groups, there are the people that operate those buildings, so the facility managers or facility management companies of this world, and they are the people that own, rent, or lease these buildings. And these three user groups, occupants, operators, and owners, look at buildings and interact with buildings through very different lenses and have very different needs. At the same time, in today's buildings, the different domains are set up and managed, operated completely separately. So we've got security and life safety systems, we've got building automation systems, we've got energy management systems. In order to realize meaningful interactions for the user groups, we need to bring those domains together and somehow make them work hand in hand. Yeah, and I'd like to add that these kind of domains are the classic traditional ones that we know and love, but more and more domains actually coming into these buildings, things like track and trace, for instance, or even the, in this example, the wayfinding kind of, it's not the traditional kind of building automation use case or domain perspective. Uh, now putting our shoes back into that journey, the occupant that I was actually walking you through, uh, obviously we touched up on many of those domains already, entering the parking garage already dealt with security systems. It also was an interaction with a building automation facility to open the garage door, for instance. And uh, when the elevator was called for me and the hassle-free access into the building was even also a combination of security and building automation. The way finding into the building obviously um, leverages a number of different sensors and, and mapping and geolocation information. And so you need to be aware about the topology of this building as well. And finally, in the, in the meeting room itself, I actually was able to deal with and uh, interact with the building automation systems such as heating or lightning. So when we look at or speak to people operating buildings, they have quite different needs. For them, ensuring the availability and the efficient usage of all the resources, all the equipment in the buildings is a key concern. So they want to have things like having issues in the building reported timely, being able to schedule repairs timely, or at times where the usage of the building is not affected, or even better, to prevent repairs through predictive maintenance, which we see, for example, in the elevator space. At the same time, they need to ensure the maximum of security for all the occupants of the building, and that's an infrastructure that gets installed for security aspects that we can leverage also for other purposes. For example, security cameras these days cannot just provide insights into what's happening security-wise. They can count people, they can count objects, and could provide information on availability of parking lots, for example. Yeah, and finally, if we look through the lens of an owner of a building, he has a completely different kind of um, you know, target that he's after. He wants to know how good is this building overall used, how, how, go how good is energy consumption, where are areas that can be improved in, in, in terms of space utilization, um, where are even areas that he needs to think about reconstructing or, or renovating. So there's a whole of lot of different perspectives. And finally, of course, he always wants to uh, have the safety of, of the building from an operation perspective guaranteed. So fire detection protection uh, is something very um, of its high ambitious to always have under control. So when we real look at how can we uh, realize this, how can we make this happen, we're looking at a kind of different journey. It's going to be a journey from the physical to the digital. So based on the physical equipment and the systems that are present in the building, um, we need to build a semantic understanding of the, of the building. And typically in the IoT space, we call this a digital twin. Now this digital twin um, needs not to reflect the status of an individual piece of equipment. We actually need to have an understanding, a digital twin of the building as it's been built as it's been layouted, and also the way it's intended to be used. So this understanding needs to take into account uh, different areas, for example, working areas versus recreation areas versus restricted areas. 
I need to understand how the equipment in these parts of the building contributes to the function of the building. With this digital twin, we can achieve two things. First of all, this digital twin helps us to tie together and to integrate the various domains in the building. And second, it allows us to take an end-to-end -end perspective and look at a complete process execution across the user interactions in the building. Yeah, and I think this actually connects very nicely to what Charles said. Uh, I think this is one of the hot things. Uh, if you want to understand an end-to-end -end operation in a building, in a commercial building, from these different kind of lenses, you really pretty much have to understand how these domains interact together and what it means to have them operated in, an, in, in a number of systems in an end-to-end -end process execution with a variety of these personas. And so I guess there's no talk about IoT these days without mentioning a digital twin, and many people mean different things when they talk about digital twins. Now, it just so happened, Christian, that we as uh, Bosch jointly created a solution architecture landscape to make these kind of journeys uh, become a reality. So we created uh, what we call uh, in the integrator space end-to-end -end perspectives IoT business services where we can serve our customers these experiences. And for sure, we need to have a variety of intelligences in the cloud and a lot of capabilities and services um, that we need to leverage and build on top of on. So no one can do this alone, as we heard many times today. And for sure, this is a composition of many, many, many uh, small building pieces, building blocks, and service capabilities. So it, you know, the capabilities from connecting devices and systems in the, in the building is, is very key. It's not just about sensors, but it's about uh, the Internet of Systems, uh, pretty much. And also how you actually uh, take building models uh, by various data source means um, and map them into what we call the built-in digital twin. And all of those capabilities from, from a system and, and software perspective is what we've laid out here in that uh, solution architecture landscape. And if I walk you through, for instance, this journey where we've, we had this indoor wayfinding capability, you see here a couple of these service capabilities highlighted that are part of this end-to-end -end journey. Um, so you see the building data pipelines that connect and ingest all of the data that flow from these IoT devices. And you see here the next generation of very intelligent um, fire detector that also can serve as an uh, indoor wayfinding sensor for you, connecting via the means of uh, connectivity gateways and let the data flow into these backend services via these very rich and intelligent data pipelines that then just, you know, semantically map with all of those complex understanding, these information flows into these building digital twins. And that end-to-end -end actually enables you to put on top um, you know, the, the, the smart wearables or these wall displays uh, that gives you this end-to-end -end journey from a user experience point of view um, and putting it all nicely together. So it's a very complex gameplay, and it's very hot, as Charles said. And uh, you have to understand it throughout the end to end. All right, so to tie things up, um, let's look at the various layers that need to come together, work together, to realize these interactions with buildings. At the very bottom, we've got the equipment, the systems that are present in the building, and of course, you've got the traditional building management systems and the, the various domains that we spoke about, but increasingly also, we see quite a large amount of retrofit systems because retrofit equipment and sensors can help to take existing buildings and add to their usage or change the usage completely without having to go through expensive remodeling. And then through gateways, edge controllers in the building, we can establish, first of all, local interactions, local processing where it is needed in the building, for example, for alerting, um, that needs to be done timely within the building, but also those controllers help us to forward the data uh, and integrate it in the cloud. And then uh, what we're working on is what we call the connected building services that take this data and integrate it into a digital twin, a complete worldview and understanding of the building as it is. But these services are not the end goal per se. The goal is to create intelligent IoT business services and these services basically provide value to owners, operators, and occupants. And 
the whole stack that is below them needs to come together to help us realize as quickly as possible, as rapidly as possible, those valuable services for the users of commercial buildings. So the question, Christian, then is, uh, where is the ecosystem? Um, well, yeah. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't say the magic ecosystem yeah. word. How yeah. can there be an IoT talk without <laughs> ecosystems? But right. it's, a, it's a pyramid. How does this pyramid somehow turn into an ecosystem, Andreas? Yeah, it's the fancy pyramid we like to say internally. So <laughs> uh, I mean, these green extension points, quote unquote, with the plus sign here, uh, is kind of like illustrating where you have join points to join this party, actually. We want system integrators, and it's just so happened that Bosch Energy and Building Solutions are one of them. Uh, and we want to provide these end-to-end uh, -end IoT business service experiences to our customers. And when we say end-to-end, -end, we mean the whole nine yards. So we mean devices, we, need, uh, we mean the, the dimensioning, we mean network, we mean provisioning, installation, configuration, operation, um, maintenance, uh, all the way through you know, tearing it down again. So the whole life cycle. Um, and you see here extension point for system indicators. So if you are a system indicator and you want to join the party, you can. Uh, if you are a software service provider and uh, you, know, you want to be in that bucket where connected building services today is from Bosch Software Innovations, you can bring your so uh, services in there. For example, here could be one of those in that bucket. Um, if you are a gateway and a system producer and you want to be part of these solutions, you can. Um, the same is true for device producers. If you want to be part of this, you can be. Uh, and there's more information that you can actually get by the end of this uh, presentation. Right, so I hope we've managed to whet your appetite a little bit to help and bring intelligent user-focused buildings about to make them a reality. And there's a few more contact points that we have during this conference. So we've got the uh, building and construction keynote coming up where you'll hear more about how ecosystems play out in this space. And of course, we've got um, two booths where you can meet us, the Bosch Soft Innovations uh, booth as well as the Microsoft booth, where you can interact with us and let's talk about the projects you have in mind and think together how this can become a reality. And finally, as we speak, in the Building Hack Challenge at Bosch Connected Experience, we've got lots of people, lots of teams have been there. They're having great fun, and they're working on bringing about innovative ideas and using these services, using these devices to bring value to the people that use buildings. And you're going to see the results tonight at the pitch night. Yeah, thank right. you, Christian. Um, and I can just add, I, I've been part of the BCX. It's just a tremendous experience. And many of these cases that we talked about today from you know, just the lens of the occupants that these guys already have a mind over there and just, as we speak, still hacking. Um, so I would say thank you, Christian, so much for this experience. Uh, so you, obviously, yes. uh, there is, uh, there's a lot of opportunity, even in these classic buildings, uh, as Frieder said at the beginning. Uh, I think we have a plenty of uh, variety of opportunities to improve these, uh, even in you know, retrofit scenarios, because uh, we can just uh, uh, bring some new things into these existing buildings and, and create these experiences. So Christian and myself, we will be uh, at the Bosch Software Innovation booth ourselves. You can also go to Microsoft. They have uh, a lot to, to tell about the digital twin kind of capabilities. And we mean a real digital twin end to end with domain integrations and not just a device or a machine twin. And with that, we'd like to thank you very much uh, for your uh, attention. And uh, back to Frieder.